Here we are, another sports car story. This is all about my XJC uh, project. Now, I bought this car when I had an awful lot on my plate, and it's probably the wrong time to buy a car, but uh, uh, it had to be done. It was on eBay, and there was a guy in Newark who was doing it a, a job, doing this car up for his father, who had always wanted an XJC, so he'd stripped it down to nothing, had all the bodywork done, it had the interior retrimmed. He was just about to start putting it all together when his, dra his dad drove home in, a, in an XJC that he'd, he'd bought. He'd got bored waiting. So, unfortunately, the poor lad was stuck with half a project, or well, project half done. So, I thought it was a good opportunity. The engine was out in little bits. The interior was all packed away nicely, but uh, all retrimmed, but not in the car. So, and it wasn't on wheels. So it's quite a difficult project to pick up. I got Phil at Heritage Car Company to pick it up with me. And uh, it was taken back to Heritage. I wasn't quite sure what I was gonna do with it. Uh, Phil checked it over and decided that it was, it was good. It wasn't amazing condition, it was good condition. You know, it, it had done a reasonable job on the bodywork. There were some things he would have done differently, but there was, there's no rust in this car. It's all been sorted, which is, again, compared to Harry Metcalf's car, which, you know, when he started taking it apart, there was a lot of rust. We're, we're in a better position here. This is a good starting point. So then I was trying to decide what to do with it. There's about 7,500 XJCs in, in the world. Um, that's, how, that's the production. So it's a rare car as just a standard XJC. So what do I do with it? This was a 4.2 straight six, which I'm not that keen on it, outside of an E-type. I don't think it's brilliant in an XJ. It always, it's all, XJ to me is built for the V12. And you know, if it had been a V12, I would have kept it as a V12. But bearing in mind, again, talking about Harry Metcalf, how much he spent on that V12, I think over, well over 20,000 pounds, I thought I don't want this project to go mad. So the first thing I did was get Phil to rebuild the rear subframe and the suspension at the back, get this car rolling, and the same at the front. So it's got all newly rebuilt, beautifully rebuilt, of course, thank you very much, Phil, front and rear, but all standard at the moment. So the rear suspension and brakes are all standard and the same with the front. So that was done. And then I thought, who's gonna do the project of putting a supercharged V8 engine in it, which is what I'd, I'd like to do. And I found Adrian at ADR Engineering in Wokingham and he uh, had already done a similar project with putting an, this V8 in an E-type. So I knew that he sort of knew how to do it and also was prepared to do it because one of the issues I had with Phil Heritage, he was not keen on doing that sort of non-standard type work, quite a traditionalist, nothing wrong with that. So it came down to, for, to ADR. The first thing we did was commit to a Steed replica. Now, the John Steed car, for anybody who doesn't know, was in the new Avengers in the mid-70s, about 1976. And they wanted a car for John Steed, who was one of the, uh, the heroes of the, of the new Avengers. Um, they were all Leyland cars at the time, so Purdy drove an MGB, and um, there was a Rover SD1. But to get a real sort of muscle car for John Steed, who I think previously had Bentleys, actually, um, at the time, 1976, Jaguar were just about to start racing Jaguar Broad Speed XJC, which had these arches on, and it was creating quite a, quite a fuss at the time. Everyone was really interested in it. So Pinewood Studios probably thought, yes, let's go that way. So, so Ralph Broad Speed was commissioned to come up with the body kit, um, well, to, well he'd, already, he'd already come up with the, with the body kit and everything for the race car, but he was commissioned to do a body kit for the road car for the new Avengers. So the, on the road car for the new Avengers, this front spoiler is not as low and it hasn't got that big air scoop in, in the front. So that is different from this kit. I bought the body kit from Steve Foster at Fiber Sports in Basildon. He had been producing this kit for a long time, but they had a big fire a few years ago, and, and the moulds were ruined. But luckily, um, one of his customers still had a set, so he was able to remould from them. 
Um, but I since discovered that this kit isn't right for a, for a broad speed, sorry, for a um, John Steed replica. It's only good for the race car, so it needs to be adapted um, for that. So anyway, we committed to a, to a uh, John Steed replica. And again, I'm influenced by Harry's garage. Harry's launch video, he mentioned that should we do a, 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 a Steed replica, I think if you've got a good car, it's quite a scary thing to do because you think, oh, I'm ruining a perfectly good XJC. It's a very pretty car in the first place. So it was one of those decisions. I knew the bodywork was good but not brilliant. I knew it was already in bits. It was a 4.2 rather than the V12. So I thought, I really like a Steed replica, and there's not many of them that have been done really well. And with a supercharged engine giving it the power that it deserves, I think... I think that's gonna, it's going to turn out well. So we committed to it. We painted the engine bay and the door jams green before the engine went in. The big issue with the engine was it's a little bit taller than the straight six and the V12. So the, the bottom engine mount needed some serious engineering to, to make it as strong as before, if not stronger, but also not too low because it's pushing it down. So there was a lot of engineering in that engine mount and in the and the mounts for the gearbox and the prop shaft because again they're in a different place and those areas needed strengthening because that's the area of the you don't want to just put it on a weak part of the body so the first six months of this project has been sorting that out this engine is now in and uh, adrian is now building up the supercharge supercharger and the and the fuel fuel lines and everything so that's going really well what might stop that at the moment is that Steve at Fiverr Fiver Sports has um, said that he would fit this body kit for me, um, which would be great because he's, you know, he knows how to fit it. And it's it, not saying Adrian can't do it or any other body shop can't do it, but Steve at Fiverr Sports has done quite a few and knows how to do it and knows how to work with the fiberglass. But he's also going to produce that that front lip spoiler, and if I show you this model that I've got, um, you'll see that, that that's quite different, and it needs to be molded um, so that um, it, it's a little project on its own, really. So that's going to be so Steve's going to be doing that at the same time. So if Steve if Steve is able to do that early, um, we'll get it across to him and get on and sort that out. The other thing that I'm I've managed to get these comp compromotive wheels, which are very similar to the, uh, the uh, Steed, rep Steed replica or the, the Ste John Steed car. They're not exactly the same, but they're good enough. They, they don't quite fit the hubs, the Jaguar hubs, so the, the Jaguar hubs need to be machined down to fit, but I think we've got the wheels. The it, dashboard is going to change a bit because it's quite a big job to change those original drag Jaguar instruments. So what I'm going to do is fit some instruments that were on, I don't know if anyone's seen the uh, Driftworks XJC. They had a lovely set of American instruments that are old-fashioned looking that I think are, are going to do the job. And I'm going to put them in a turned aluminium dashboard. So that's going to be a departure. But in a, I, hopefully in, the, in this sort of... Bentley-esque sort of John Steed kind of um, expression. I, I don't think we're going to be too different. I don't think it's going to clash too much. Again, I wouldn't mind your thoughts on that. Let me know in the comments. So we're going to go a bit non-original dashboard. The interior was already retrimmed in black. So I'm not going to change that. It's supposed to be dark green with the beige interior. Color-wise, I've based the color of this car on the model that I've got because there's a really very, very good model of an XJC that you can get. So I've, I've based the, the color on that model. I think the original Steed car was slightly, a slightly lighter color, so I'm, but I'm pleased with the model color. It's a very dark, metallic British racing green, and it looks right. Um, the tires are going to be difficult. I've been talking to uh, vintage tires down in, down in the New Forest about the tires, but I think we need to... We need to be able to get the rims on. We need to see where the wheel is in relation to the wheel arch, and we'll measure up from there and see what the tyres are going to be. But that's a difficult one. I don't want too low profile a tyre. I think it would look a bit odd. It needs to be 
appropriate to a mid 70s sports car. But anyway, we're definitely going down the John Steed route. My ambition with this car is to finish it to a good enough standard to be able to contact Harry Metcalf and do a comparison between the two cars. It is, it, it's a difficult choice. I think it was a difficult choice for Harry to go standard because he does obviously likes the John Steed car. He says he was influenced by possibility of cracking roof. And again, I wouldn't mind if anyone's got any experience of this, whether we need to beef the, the roof up because the roof is weaker on an XJC than on the saloon. But I've read up, you know, there's a lot on the internet and a lot of people saying it was the, it was the poor quality paint in the 70s that made it crack, that it won't crack now because paint's got more flexibility in it. Also, vinyl roofs were one very in, but also meant that they didn't have to prepare this, the roof as much as the, they would have done if they were painting it. I think there was one production car without vinyl roof. But, it, but yeah, I wouldn't mind uh, anyone's got any experience of it, whether we need to beef the roof up a bit, because we're going to have wider tyres and obviously a lot, of, a lot of power. So there's going to be some twist force there that might have a detrimental effect to the roof. But again, I think that was something else that Harry Metcalf was influenced by when he went down the non-broad speed or non-steed replica route. Let me know what you think in the comments. This is a great opportunity with YouTube to, for, for that kind of feedback because I'm, I'm not sure exactly what we need to do with the roof, but um, I, think, I think this is going to turn out really well, especially with people like Steve at Fiber Sports fitting the, the kit and doing the front spoiler, getting it right, getting this XJR V8 engine right. It's only done 30,000 miles, this engine, so it is a cheap option to, to, to put a V8 in it, still a Jaguar, still 4.2, so I don't have to change the logbook. There, there are complications. You have to get a standalone loom, which is a lot easier than it was a few years ago. So that's going to have to be fitted. The supercharged engine has a different fuel system in the sense that you have to have a return to the fuel tanks. It sort of, the fuel comes forward. If it's not used, it's pumped back to the to the fuel tank, so that's got to be fitted. But again, Adrian knows all about that. Once the car's on the road, we have to look at uh, suspension and brake modifications as necessary. As I said, this is done as standard. Um, let me know in the comments what you think about uh, what we should do with the brakes. But again, I'm not going to go crazy. Once this is on the road, we drive it, see how it feels, see how it's braking. From a weight perspective, the brakes are good enough because obviously this is probably a bit lighter than the original V12 or straight six. Whether the rear axle and, and diff can handle the power, again, that diff is the same on the V12 and the straight six, I think. Again, let me know if it's different, but I think it can handle the power to a certain extent, but um, we can operate, up, uprate the diff. I know that, um, again, Harry Metcalf, I, he, he uprated his diff and suspension uh, and brakes, and we can do that as a separate project. Let's get this car on the road first. But any ideas on that, please let me know. So, a bit different from my normal video. We're trying to see this project through, get it on the road. I'm more of an on-the-road type YouTuber, I like to think. But um, I think this is going to be an exciting project. There aren't many steed replicas on the road that, uh, that I've seen on YouTube anyway. And uh, let's do a good one. And, and uh, let's try and see how it turns out. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to see this story come along, but also my Lamborghini Murcielago Roadster manual conversion is getting closer, and that needs to be, uh, needs to be seen to believe. And also my Triumph Stag uh, video coming along very soon too. Thanks for watching. Look forward to seeing you next time.